Hey all, I have a story to tell today. So recently I found myself doing an internship away from home. New city, new people, came here all alone. And if you knew me, you'd know I'm not the best at making friends, so the first two weeks were pretty rough for me. I was homesick, lonely, and burnt out from an unsuccessful project that had cost me hundreds of hours. So I spent most of my free time lying on my couch, demotivated, doom scrolling Reddit and YouTube. I mean, you know it's bad when you wake up at 10 a.m. on a weekend and you don't get out of bed until 2 p.m. But the next week, I started eating lunch with a coworker. Let's call her Chell. Apparently, she would go on a walk after every lunch, and I decided to go along with her this time. I also decided to introduce her to geocaching which, for those of you who don't know, is basically a real-life treasure hunt game where people place containers for others to find. It's super fun, and I highly recommend it. Anyway, there were a couple caches near the office, so we went to one, found it, and I think she had a great time. So the next couple days, we would eat lunch together, and each day we'd venture out and find a geocache. We talked about our hobbies, how I really wanted to play piano, but couldn't find one to play in the city, how she really wanted to get into photography, and recently bought a camera that she was really excited about. It was also this time where I learned she was studying on the East Coast, and was leaving at the end of August, in two weeks, to continue her studies. And I thought to myself, well fuck me, I'm just beginning to be friends with this person, and I'll probably never see her in person again in two weeks. How the fuck am I supposed to deal with that, you know? But life goes on. Fast forward a bit. It's the weekend. T minus six days until Chell leaves. But it's an absolutely fantastic weekend because I've finally located a piano that I can play. It's at a lovely, quaint little used bookstore two train stops away from my office. And I had an absolutely great time playing there. The person working at the counter even took a video and sent it to her friends. I wanted to go back there and invite Chell. So on Tuesday, three days before she left, during her lunchtime walk, I told her about the piano and how I was going to visit it today. And unexpectedly, before I could even invite her, she asked if she could come along to do some shopping. So that afternoon, we left work early and took the train to the bookstore. It was a sunny August day, and the breeze from the open door wafted just enough fresh air in to cool us down from the summer sun. I played a bunch of piano pieces by Chopin and Ravel, with her sitting next to me, and every time I finished a piece, I'd look over and she'd eagerly clap with a big smile on her face. She called me a professional level, even though I didn't think I deserved that title. And at the end, I even sat her down and taught her how to play a few bars of Bach's first prelude in C major. I placed her hands at the piano and taught and watched proudly as she made it through the first C major bar, then D minor, then the G dominant seventh, and back to C major. Afterwards, we walked around, perusing at all the cute shops smattered around this charming little downtown area. We bonded over our childhoods and how even though she was a decent bit older than me, we both grew up watching the antics of Tom and Jerry. We walked into a thrift store and took a mirror selfie wearing matching beanies while trying to hold in our laughter. I still remember how she would randomly chant, happy, happy, happy and how I couldn't help but smile and be infected by this seemingly endless source of good vibes. The afternoon was still young, and I got the idea that since there was an ultimate frisbee event coming up for work, I should teach Chell how to throw a frisbee. So on this sunny August afternoon, we went into a toy store, bought a frisbee, and walked over to a nearby park. I remember how every time Chell threw the thing, she would go, Hui! And when the frisbee went sideways and missed the mark completely, she'd always die laughing of embarrassment. I watched excitedly as her throws slowly became more and more accurate. Shaded from the beating sun by watchful oak trees, the red frisbee and the good vibes went 
back and forth, back and forth. We threw this thing for about an hour, and then it came time for us to go home. She was taking the train, and I was biking, so I waited at the train station with her. We chilled together on a bench, gazing into the slowly darkening summer sky, listening to a band playing live music for a bar in the distance. Her train came, we hugged, and I started walking forward back towards where my bike was parked. As the train slowly accelerated and passed me, she saw me from the window, eagerly smiled and waved, and I smiled back and did a little salute to send her on her way. I caught a glimpse of her laughing as the train sped off into the distance. Honestly, I don't know exactly why I remember that day so fondly. Hanging out with friends isn't exactly a new thing for me, but the, the truth of the matter is, for the first time in weeks, I went to bed that night and I didn't feel lonely. On my mood tracker app, in almost 1,200 days of consecutive logging, this was one of eight days that I had marked a five out of five, a truly happy day. And then before I knew it, Friday came and it was time for her to leave for the east. That afternoon, we left work together and ended up walking and getting ice cream. As we sat down in the shade, an ice cream cone in my hand and a milkshake in hers, I heard her chant again, happy, happy, happy. We hugged a last goodbye, and looking over the top of her uber, she gave me one last smile as we parted ways. I was the last person she hung out with before leaving. Before she left, Chell gave me a handwritten letter. It was one of the sweetest things someone's ever done and written for me. I mean, if the word wholesome was a person, it would probably be her, and now she wasn't here anymore. I brushed my thumb over where she signed her name, remembering a sunny afternoon where the sound of a slightly out-of-tune piano drifted from an old bookstore. I couldn't bring myself to feel anything. I spent the weekend coping, trying to find acceptance. The only thing that was on my mind was that sunny August afternoon where a friend laughed while I pulled over my head a white beanie with an owl on it. A friendship so ephemeral, with so many more possible happy moments, if only happenstance kept us together for a little while longer. Then one day, before I go into bed, I looked over at my shelf where I had placed the red frisbee, with Chell's letter tucked under it. I picked up the frisbee and pretended to throw it, imagining her in the distance, ready to catch it. I smiled. Maybe, I thought, in many years' time, I'll look at this and remember a sunny August afternoon where a red frisbee went back and forth, back and forth. Maybe soon enough, through chance and destiny, we'll see each other again. Thanks for listening.